Hey guys, I'm coming at you today with a pretty huge library haul once again. Um, we just we can't stay away from the library. I don't know. We like that we can look at all the books and don't have to pay any money for it. So today I am doing this video in collab with Jess from The Homeschool Convert. I'm so excited. I found her channel in the last few months and we both have a love for books. And so it was her idea to do this collab. So she's going to be sharing a library haul sometime today. Um, I will leave her channel linked below. I would love for you to go check it out. Uh, she has just been homeschooling this last year and I, I can see us having a lot of similarities in our homeschool. So check out her video after you've watched this and hopefully you can get like a ton of ideas, um, books that you can request from your library based off of these two videos. So I've said it time and time again, but I'm going to say it again. My library, my local, like in my town library is pretty terrible. But what I do is I request library books across my province because we can do that for free. So we, there's pretty much not a single book that I want to request that our library does not have. It's always creepy when your neighbors are walking by watching you film. Anyway, um, I've kind of sectioned this off. Our more like picture books or like reading books will be first and then the reference books will be next. And I'm going to leave a link of all the books below um, because that's the kids upstairs. Uh, that way if you want to see exactly which edition or copy or if you want to buy one of them, you can do that. So let's just get started here. The first one I wish I would have included on my list of our uh, read-alouds for the next year because this is one I want to read and I had forgotten about it. This is The Rise and Fall of Mount Majestic. I honestly don't know anything about this other than I've heard so many people say really good things about it, so I want to read it. Um, I got the physical copy out, which is pretty cool because it's got some pictures. Um, but we'll, we'll definitely do the audiobook if there is. If I can't get it from my library, then I will um, purchase it on Audible. I recently got an Audible one-year subscription because I realized that's so much cheaper. They give you all 12 credits right off the bat, and it's only like $10 a credit instead of like 15 ish or whatever. Um, so I'm assuming this is like middle grade fantasy. A giant fantastical tale in which a mousy-haired girl with a big imagination must make an entire island believe the impossible before it's too late. So, I don't know. I think it'll be fun. And my kids love fantasy, so this one is one we will try to get to for our read-alouds this year. Then we were having like this manga graphic novel conversation in our house, um, so I got this Splatoon manga book out because they're read like backwards. You start from what we consider the back of the book and read. I don't know which... so do you do that page and then that page? Yeah, this is page 9 and then that's page 10. So, um, yeah. And I was just like looking for whatever manga I could and my son has played Splatoon before so I thought this would be interesting, maybe. I have no idea. And then this was under the manga books um, but it's actually a graphic novel. It's Baby Mouse, Queen of the World, uh, but it's like a fairly easy um, graphic novel, so I think it would be really good for, you know, like beginning readers. Um, this one looks like a fun one. This is a picture book that came out at the beginning of the year and I am so excited to have finally read it. I said Kiss in the Corners. This was one of my anticipated books for January or February. Um, and this is just about a an Asian girl who is just um, learning to love her eyes, the shape that they are, and the it's okay to be different from other people and I, I really like this one. The illustrations are just stunning and we were all ooing and aahing over them. Fun, a few like fun rhyming books for the uh, preschooler. It's almost almost preschooler. He's a toddler right now. Um, I was thinking of doing a video sharing like all our board books that we own, um, just because like, I thought that might be interesting for people who have like the baby toddler stage. We didn't do board books for my first kid because she was like 
perfect when it came to books. She's like so delicate. I mean, and now she's like this huge reader, so it kind of makes sense. But the other kids, the, the younger ones here, they're a little bit more aggressive. Um, they like to eat book. The baby likes to eat books more than read them. Uh, so uh, we have some board books. So maybe if you'd be interested in like some baby toddler recommendations for books, let me know. Anyway, I got Little Blue Truck. I would love to buy this one because this is such a fun rhyming book. Uh, it's about a little blue truck who's like nice to everyone and then he helps someone that wasn't so nice and it's got like a cute little story and great rhyme. And if you're gonna have a rhyming book, it, it has to be well done. Speaking of rhyming books, we also got Bear Snores On. This is a really cute story about a bear who's hibernating and there's a bit of a party going on in his den. Then I got this book out thinking we could maybe do it for like a morning time um, with the kids, but we haven't actually started it yet. Uh, this is Love, Dove, Love Does for Kids by Bob Goff. Um, they're just little devotionals and I thought we could try this in our morning basket. Um, I have seen this book on Book Outlet a few times and almost purchased it, but then I was like, well, let's get it from the library, see what we think of it, because I'm not usually a fan of devotionals for myself, but I've actually never done any with the kids, so I will hopefully report back and let you know what we think of this one, um, but I, I do like the illustrations. I think it's a cute book. math hacks, cool tips, and less stress. Cool tips plus less stress equal better marks. Um, I think this year we're gonna actually like officially do something for math. I have not done anything with my kids for math as far as like anything formal and we're not gonna go very formal either. We're not purchasing anything uh, but my daughter's going into sixth grade so I thought we would maybe like up the game a little bit and this is something that she just loves. Like it's just all sorts of different um, hacks and obviously it's called math hacks uh, just different tips on ways to figure things out and this is her kind of book so it's just I like to use the library to be like okay can we borrow this resource is this something we should buy like I like that I it helps me save money because I don't always have to buy everything Then I kind of have a bit of an Usborne obsession, uh, like most homeschool parents. Um, what I do on my library site is I'll like just search Usborne and then I will um, filter it so that it sorts by like the newest released Usborne books first. So then every time I'd like, there's like 20 new Usborne books, I just go and request them all because I like Usborne books but they're expensive. So I like to figure out which ones we can borrow from, from the library, which ones we need to buy. This one is Never Get Bored, Draw and Paint. So it's just a bunch of like different ideas of things to make. Uh, this is a tessellate, uh, draw extraordinary outfits. So this is like folding paper, um, equip your studio. Uh, I saw all sorts of different things on here. So it's just ways for kids to be creative. And I like that this one is not something that you draw inside. They have a few books like that where you're supposed to draw in there. And I, I don't like that. I like just like, give me all the ideas and then we'll draw somewhere else. I have a soft spot for like good animal books. Um, as of right now, I think Jared is actually making an animal research unit because I want my son to do that for this next year. Um, so I like ones with great illustrations and uh, catching information and stuff. And this one's a really good one. So this is Weird, Wild, Amazing, Exploring the Incredible World of Animals. And it just has like 
very catchy pictures. Um, I like the little groupings of facts. I think that's so good for kids. Uh, just kind of catches their eye a little bit more than just like tons of words. And um, yeah, so this is a really good kind of like overview of like so many different animals. Going back to the math books, do not open this math book. This is an addition and subtraction version. I don't know if they have other ones. I should actually look at this. Um, this was a, just a time when I was like actually browsing my local library shelves. I pretty much never do that. Um, so it's kind of like just got different, different ways to make 10, game time, uh, just all sorts of different fun math things. So I should probably do this one with my son. is human body theater I'm pretty sure I only have four kids I think that's just one of them crawling not a herd of stampeding elephants like it sounds like um, anyway we have had this before I think it's just a graphic novel um, this one came out it has loose pages apparently it's kind of falling apart so um, it's just all sorts of information about the human body told in like really cute illustrations and yeah my son like I've said over and over again too, he, he loves the human body, um, but he doesn't like to read a ton, but he likes lots of pictures, and so this one's, a, I think, a really good one. He'll probably enjoy this one. solely for me. Um, wildflowers. This is National Geographic Kids. Um, I I used to hate flowers. I kind of still don't really like flowers, but I kind of do. It's a weird situation. Um, but I thought this would be cool to find, see if I can like figure out what kind of wildflowers we have in our area. Um, my friend Sue from Reaching Happy, she has um, an Instagram account. She recently just shared. I'll, I'm going to link her reel that she shared. It's like all these, I think lupines is what they're called. Um, it, it just looks so gorgeous. I decided we have to move there because we don't have anything that pretty here. We are in such a drought right now and we live in a place that's usually so cold but it's like currently so hot. Nothing likes to grow here. Um, so I would like to live somewhere where we had like beautiful wildflowers. If you have a spot where we should move, let me know. My daughter really likes this series. She hasn't seen this book yet. This is the Osborne Climate Crisis for Beginners. So they have money for beginners, economics for beginners. I don't remember a ton of them. And she loves these. Um, just the way things are illustrated. Um, the information, once again, is like little groupings of information are so much better than like paragraphs of text. Uh, so yeah, this whole series, any book in this series, she just sits down and devours. She just pours over it. I love that. I love raising readers. And do you know how you raise readers? Is you read yourself. And you go to the library and you get out a million books every month. You don't even have to like actually spend any money. it's another Osborne book. Um, this is See Inside Germs. Uh, my kids want to do a unit, we have so many unit ideas, this is gonna be a problem, on plagues and pandemics uh, because that's fun. Uh, and this is a lift the flap. 
about germs. So, ah, uh, it's just so cute. Um, the germs look a little bit more friendly than maybe we want kids to think, but you know, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. I they haven't looked at this one a ton yet because I have to keep it out of the baby's reach. Lift the flap books are so good in theory until you have a little baby around that wants to rip all the flaps. So uh, this one's a really cute one though. definitely a bit of an Usborne theme. I obviously went and um, requested a lot of the new ones. This one is the Usborne book of the brain and how it works. So once again, kind of like human body theme. Um, oh man, I really like Usborne. There's just, this one is a, quite a large book, like size-wise, um, but it's got lots of information about neurons and uh, sleep cycle, emotions, memory, seeing. I wish Osborne could just sponsor me and send me all their new books and I'll review them or share them on the channel. How does one get a deal like that? I don't want to be an Osborne consultant. Been there, done that. I just want people to send them to me for free. It's probably not a thing. Okay, and this is a book that I have checked to see if my library has had time and time again. They never have, and it's one I've thought about buying, but I never knew, like, is it worth buying? And so we finally got it. It's The Garden, The Curtain, and The Cross. So this is the story about, like, the crucifixion and stuff, and we haven't read it yet. Um, but I really wanted to see the inside, and I have this weird thing where, like, picture books can't have too many words. If they have too many words, I just like don't even read them to the kids. Um, but this one looks really good, so we need to actually read it and see if this is something worth buying because in theory, this is one I would like to own if it's, if it's a good one. Then I've got two Osborne books. Um, I got a beehive and why we need bees. So these are this one's a peep inside. So this has got some flaps, so it's not completely little kid friendly. Um, but I like the little holes and things that they have. And then I got Why Do We Need Bees? Once again, this is a lift the flap. I like both of their series, their first question and answers and uh, the peep inside series. I thought I would get these for the preschooler, toddler slash almost preschooler. Um, for him to look at, I would like to do a bees unit, but that might have to wait until next summer because we've, we've just got too many, uh, maybe like next spring. This is my last Osborne book. This is The Amazing Discoveries of 100 Brilliant Scientists. So my, my kids are both actually really into like science and my son loves like inventions and things. So this book is so good for him uh, to just like look at. Once again, their illustrations are gorgeous. Um, my husband just put out an inventor's uh, research unit and my kids just love that kind of thing. So there's so many different things. So yeah, like 100. 100 brilliant scientists, so lots of different things to learn about in here. Two more books. Now, this is DK 
uh, the Book of Brilliant Bugs, and this one was interesting to me because I don't know if I've ever read a DK book that's like illustrated. I feel like maybe because we usually get the Smithsonian ones, they more usually mostly just have pictures. Um, but this one has like a combination of pictures and illustrations. Like, look how cool is this? Um, so that there are words in this book are a little bit more like I feel like the format of this feels more Usborne than DK. Um, and now I just kind of want to sit down and read this. Um, it's different things like life cycle of a moth, cleaning up, bugs that glow. Oh, I would also like to live somewhere that has fireflies. Lupines and fireflies, where can I live? I feel like this is going to be more like southeastern US. Um, I've never seen a firefly. I would like to. My book stack is falling over. Okay, and the last book is The Ultimate Reptilopedia. Uh, this is National Geographic Kids, and my kids have been pouring over this, especially the boys. They're gravitating towards it. There's like uh, lots of like huge um, photographs that are, you know, so nice and big and crisp and action packed and different information. And this one just has the boys pouring over it. So I think I gathered up all my library books that I wanted to share. They're kind of spread all over the house and then I have to find them. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to let me know like some books that you've recently got from the library that you think we would be interested in so I can request them. And then hop over to Jess's channel and check out her library haul. Thanks for watching guys.